years, cycling has again been the fastest growing mode. We've had our number of trips per day increase over 30% over the last two years. And so our mode share has gone from 4% of all daily trips uh, to 7%. And then just looking at the commute to work, we've actually hit 10% of trips are now being taken by people biking. So what we've been doing as a host city for Pro Walk, Pro Bike, Pro Place is letting people share the experiences of what we've been doing for designing for people of all ages and ability. And in our downtown, it looks a lot like Hornby, uh, where we have protected bike lanes and often in case we uh, love to provide the landscaping and providing a, a greening, calming environment at the same time. Beautiful built out infrastructure. I love the planters that delineate the space between the bikes and the cars. I love the intersection treatments. They have these great uh, plastic planters, self-watering planters, that I looked at them and I'm like, these are fabulous. Specific different uh, plant species uh, are chosen to be able to withstand at least the hottest summers in Vancouver. Uh, they do require a minimal amount of uh, watering times uh, per year, but uh, essentially really contribute to the, the public realm as uh, we've delivered more protected bike lanes here in Vancouver. Vancouver has undergone a tremendous transformation in the last decade around safe, separated bike infrastructure. I know it's succeeding when I complete my journeys and I don't feel anger anymore. I'm no longer in vicious confrontations with drivers. This is some of the best infrastructure in North America and I've really enjoyed the evolution. In 2007, 2008, they have some first generation cycle tracks with the bend in, no protection at the intersection. Now, more recently, you have more protection at the intersection and they're doing them quicker, a lot cheaper. So they're getting them in very quick, which is quite impressive. But then we decided we really needed to come back and so kind of make it more feel like at least a protected intersection and act that way. So you have these, you know, concrete in the same level as the asphalt now, really helping identify kind of where the two protected bike lanes meet. You know, much more of a, of a green bike box, as you can see the person here, really clear about where she wants to be able to go. Extending that concrete though and putting that little island out there. So we all have those um, you know, concerns about the traffic management engineer. So you know, we were told, look at that truck. That truck's going to hit it. The truck does not hit it. It's fine. It's going to work out. It's great. I mean, they're plenty wide. Stephanie and I can ride side by side and have a conversation. And uh, they're well marked. It's inspiring to see they tried a lot of different designs. So you kind of can learn from what has and hasn't worked here and that they continue to come back and, and revise and change. Lots of protected bike lanes in downtown, two-way on one side of the street with signals, some one-way. They're moving toward consistent design so that you know what to expect. Great improvements on their multi-use path network around the waterways of widening the pathway on the seawall taking these shared use paths, which we have in a lot of our cities, but actually separating them out for bikes and for pedestrians. So it's very clear where you belong and reducing that conflict and friction and investing a lot of money. So we're at the intersection of uh, Hornby and Helmkin. And so Hornby was our protected bike lane uh, 2A introduced uh, in 2010. Uh, then in 2012, we had the Helmkin Greenway intersecting with it. Uh, so we designed it still with our green conflict zones and um, have come back since though and added uh, some clarifying uh, directional bike boxes uh, for people. Uh, but even in addition to that, after doing some monitoring and looking at the safety, uh, we've added some uh, safety hits and some uh, additional clarity. Cycling in Vancouver is so much fun. Uh, it puts me back to like when I was 10 years old and I just get to go out and meet up with friends and ride around and go out to eat. I feel super safe to watch the city change while our children are growing and watch them adapt to the new city and the new places they can get to has been spectacular. And everyone's here marveling over the walkable, bikeable downtown, but this, you know, in our opinion, there's still a lot of work to be done and, and we're hoping to push that conversation forward and that yardstick so that uh, we don't become complacent and we don't rest on our laurels. The design of their bike lanes, the way they're, they're put forward, and you know, we have to keep getting cities to compete with each other and learn from each other and dream bigger about how we design cities for people, places, and bicycles. We're excited, we're seeing more children, uh, more new people cycling. We're at 24% of our 300 kilometer bikeway network is considered designed for all ages and abilities. And uh, that's gonna be again, a focus of our effort going forward in the years ahead. I enjoy 
enjoy just being able to just sort of relax and just sort of ease into their lanes. I was like, okay, I honestly just want to do this for the rest of the conference. <laughs>